Good morning, grade eight. Welcome back to today's class. I see that um, it's only, well, morning grade eight. I see it's a uh, healing and then there, okay, Natalie's here. Okay, guys, so um, welcome to CD. Okay, I'm so grateful when I see the class is picking up uh, because it's always difficult when it's a, um, a intense lesson like this then to start all over again. So let's look at this lesson. Yesterday we stopped um, at the questions and I just quickly want to recap with you guys. So please listen to me. Remember, direct speech is of course when you um, write the sentence of the person who's saying it's direct words and we are um, writing it on paper when I mean, we use the punctuation like the colon and the inverted commas. When it is not that, we lose the, um, we, we don't use the, um, in, the inverted commas, we just repeat what somebody's saying. Okay, guys, sorry, just give me a moment. Sorry, guys, I um, <laughs> had to. To the indirect speech then um, some of the bywoorde, the adverbs, changes, as well as some of the voornaamwoorde. Now guys, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds just to recap, read through this again. And then I'm going to go to the questions that I gave you guys yesterday uh, before we then go on with the lesson. Okay, so let's quickly take 10 seconds, read through this, and then we're gonna start the, the, the questions. Okay, so let's then start with the questions. Remember guys, uh, we're allowed to make a mistake in class. We are allowed to learn in this class, that's what I want. So if we do this lesson and you, and you wanna try, and you try and answer a question, you see maybe um, that you've done it wrong, I don't want you to worry about it. We learn from our mistakes. So let's then quickly look at the first question. We must change this sentence now from the direct speech to the indirect speech. Now, yesterday we started with this uh, with this um, questions, and I learned that um, that um, we have to repeat them because um, it's important to look at the the different um, um, steps that we have to follow. So, and fra, please remember that when we do so, when we have a question where we ask or fra, we are going to use the word of in the indirect speech. So look at this example. And fra, this is the present tense. And fra vergaard. We have to remember when we are speaking to somebody directly, gaard, then we're going to use fur, the word fur. And fra vergaard of hy vir haar kan sê vir wie hy die vorige dag sy fiets geleen het. Okay, so look there. And An fra vergaard, referring to gaard, fra, then the voeg word that usually works with the word fra, for her, the, um, pro, the pronoun that changed, can say for wie hy pronoun die vorige dag sy fiets geleen het. Vorige dag in referring to gisterday. Okay guys, so let's then quickly, oh I see there's five chats there, let's see. Um, okay, <laughs> alright guys, so let's quickly then uh, try and do the following uh, sentence. I just see there. Uh, oops, 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 oops. Sorry, my baby's actually typing with me here. Quickly want to do this.
So let's see if there's some more of that typos. Yeah, uh -uh. in the previous class, I also saw some of this stuff and I do think it's old age, I'm telling you. Okay, so let's quickly then try do the second one. Pa beveel, dad is ordering. Jan, kom dadelijk hier naartoe en bring hier die boek saan. Jan, come here and bring the book. See if you can change that to the indirect speech. We will start with the following. Pa beveel Jan om. I'm doing it in the wrong. Uh, let's just quickly see. Sorry. Yeah, I was correct. Okay. Start the sentence like this. Barbefeel Jan Om. Try and finish the sentence for me quickly. I'm going to give you guys a minute. There's the start of the sentence written in the indirect speech. Try and see whether you can finish that sentence up. So, the, the son say, Jan, kom dadelijk hier naartoe en bring hier die boek saam. Jan, uh, pa beveel Jan om, um, om daar hier naartoe gaan, wa, wat vir ander hier naartoe, word daar naartoe. Remember now, the word hier naartoe. Hier naartoe. Becomes daar naartoe. Hier die. Becomes daar die. See if you can now change that sentence. Remember that is now the, um, the bijwoorde that will change. Give you a minute, see if you can quickly do that. Guys, just take a chance. I know it's Friday, we are all tired. Let's see if you can quickly take a chance, see whether you can change this. Are you there? Where's my regular talkers? Natalie, who else is here? The Sedi, Ntlandla, most how you guys come. Ntlanla says, Pa beveel Jan om dadelijk kom daar naartoe en bring hier die boek saam. Okay, almost there, almost there. Thank you for trying. Pa beveel Jan om dadelijk daar naartoe te kom en daar die boek saam te bring. Remember what I, what I showed you here. Thank you, Ntlanla. That was actually a very difficult sentence. Hey? If this counted uh, two marks, you would have definitely gotten one. Okay, Francois het gesê. So this is first of all, number three is a past tense sentence. So look at that. Pa het gesê, die son skyn daarom warm vandag. Vandag must change. To what will vandag change? Let's go and have a look. Look there. Vandag will come. will change to daar die dag. So let's see. Vandag word daar die dag. Okay. Try and change that. Start the sentence with... I'm not going to type the entire word. Francois het gesê dat and then you try and finish that sentence for me. Come on guys, you can do this. I know you can. Anla, do you want to give it a go again? Remember now in the indirect speech, when we change the sentence, we are not going to use the exclamation mark. We can rather use a word there. Natalie, you want to give it a go? Okay, so let's look at the answer then. The answer there at number three will be 
Francho het gesê dat die son daar die dag daarom warm skyn. En uh, Nintendo sê, Francho het gesê dat die son skyn daarom vandag. Ja, yeah, you see, you almost had it correctly. Just change the, some of the word order in the sentence. Well, dan, Nintendo, number four. Ma sê, en, was dadelijk die skorrel goed op. That's not going to be say. She's going to be feel that. She's going to order her. Guys, I'm showing you the answers every time. <laughs> Ma beveel en was dadelijk die skotel goed op. So now, we will use the following. We will say the following. We'll start with Ma beveel en om. And then you must try. Come on. It's not just in Klan Land this class. There's a lot of you guys. And I know this is a bit difficult. But I wouldn't have asked you if I thought that it weren't possible for you to do it. So try. Okay, more befeel and om. Remember, it's the present tense. So we, uh, and we're also not changing the time in the sentence. So it must still be in the present tense. Okay, let's see. Come on, guys. As I said, it's not just in Tlandla. We have to exercise this. Not exercise, we have to practice. Tlandla says, Ma beveel aan is dadelijk om die skotel goed uh, te op. Not bad. Not bad try. So, uh, let's say die Ma beveel aan om dadelijk die skotel goed op te was. There you go. Um, Ma beveel aan om dadelijk die skotel goed op te was. Thank you, let's say in Tlandla for trying. This is really good. Now look at this. Remember when I said to you um, yesterday, I did a slide with you guys that showed you how the three ways is you can put a direct speech sentence. Now this is one of them. Die motor, vertel Piet, het op die draai omgeslaan. This is a past it sentence. So, Piet, vertel dat die motor, and then you go. See if you can start the sentence. Uh, sorry, I wrote Pete there. It's Pete. Just quickly see whether you can change that sentence. See if you can do that. Okay, the series say Piet vertel dat die motor het om die draai omgestaan. Almost there, almost there again. Well done. Piet vertel dat die motor op die draai omgestaan het. So you must, you, yeah, you just had to change the word order from the het en de omgestaan. The series, you are very close. Well done. Pa sê, dankie vir al die limoene wat jylle eergister gebring het. Dad saying, thank you for all the oranges that they brought yesterday. Bossy. Now I'm just going to write this. See if you can. The city in Thunder. Thank you so much for trying. I know it's Friday and we all are tired. As I promised you, it's not me who's singing like that, hey? <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, oh, are you, go are you going on holiday? Is it holiday? Do we have classes on Monday? I'm sure we have classes on Monday. <laughs> no class? Oh, 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 okay. 
Weekend. Okay. Yo, you almost made me give me a scare here. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm excited. Bye to Lebe Dank for all the lemune what I let two days geleden gebruik het. Okay, guys, listen to me. I know this is a bit difficult. So what I'll do is I'll get some other um Okay, almost the end, Lanla. I'll, I'll get some extra exercises for you guys. I think we're going to need it. Jack, for our head, Jay, with by Nyan. Jack? What's going on? What's going on here? Sorry, my boy is actually doing this with me. Okay, so there you go. Sorry for that. So I'm just quickly going to um, show you the answer there. Jack, for our head, Jay, with by And so number seven's answer will be Jack it for Jan gefra of hy hoof by net. Okay, so there you go. All right, guys, listen to me quickly. What I think is, and I think this is a very important thing we should all listen to now, because I see there was not a, a, enough participation, which is very strange for me with the grade A class, because you guys always participate. Thank you, Lissidi. So I think quickly answer me and be honest. Did you understand this lesson? Or do you want me to do some extra exercises with you? In my opinion, I think we should do some extra exercises. Okay, so can I then ask the following? We are going to start with what we call leidend and bedrijvend now. Then on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on how far we get with the, following, with the next PowerPoint, I think we should do a revision activity on this and then do some extra. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna start with a very long lesson, which is Leiden and Bedrijven, much easier than this. Then we're gonna finish that, and then I'm gonna revise this lesson with you again with some extra activities. I'd rather make sure you guys are okay, than rush through it. Unfortunately, I don't have it, uh, extra um, exercises with me just yet. So I cannot, um, I cannot not do a lesson, so we have to, then quickly go on with the next one. Quick, uh, have a look here. In your Afrikaans handbook and study guide on page 36 to 37, there is also an explanation on this. So your homework for then Tuesday, Wednesday, one of those two days is to go through that if you have it. If you don't, then I'll, um, what I'll do is I'll just make a note here. I will take a picture for you guys and then write it um, put it on the drive for you guys I just want you to go through that um, for for Tuesday's lesson then okay then there's also three uh, videos there for, uh, two from YouTube one from Facebook guys I want to advise you I want to beg you I cannot beg you enough go and watch that that will also explain that to you so perhaps if you don't have that book go and watch this video so quickly take a picture I'm going to count till five and then I'm going on right thank you guys for being honest asking for more um, um, exercises I think that is very wise. And I think that's very responsible of you to say, ma'am, let's quickly go through this again. Okay, so take a picture. You've got five seconds left. Okay, all right. Uh, so then let's go on guys. So then there is the drive link. What I will do is by um, Sunday, you'll have this PowerPoint in your in, in the drive link. Email me. Um, there was one query that I had from a parent with regards to your test results, which I didn't forget, which I will definitely have a look at. Um, no, 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 Lissidi, we are not done. As I said, we're going to the next lesson then. Okay, so now the next lesson, of course, one of my favorite stuff in Afrikaans to do. Um, okay, so Natalie, ma'am, what's the drive code? Okay, Natalie, I'm quickly going back for you. Quickly take a picture before I go on. This is important. I have to go with to the new lesson. So I'm going to count till five, um, Natalie. Then you must have taken a picture there underneath the email. No, Helen, we are not done at all. 
Okay, Natalie, that's it. I'm going on. Um, at the end of the following lesson, you can also get it. Okay, Leidens and Bedrijven. So now, guys, we are not done. We are going on with the new lesson. Okay, guys. So, very important thing in Afrikaans is what we call Leidens and Bedrijven. You would know it in Afrikaans as active and passive voice. So, of course, um, one of the things is a very important question. Okay, no, just our inspiration for the day. If you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way, which I think all of you can do. Right, important question. Can't remember, but I think yesterday I asked you class to go through Stompy for today. Can you remember what the onderwerp, a voorwerp and a gezegde is? Let's hear. Can you guys remember what the onderwerp, a voorwerp and a gezegde is in a sentence? I'm going to start singing if you don't answer me. You don't want to hear that. Your ears will burn. Can you remember what the onderwerp, a voorwerp and a gezegde is? In other words, a subject, a object and a verb. Can you remember? Agent Landla says yes, just before I wanted to start singing. Okay, so guys, let's just recap here. So the onderwerp, of course, referring to the subject, is the person or thing in the sentence. Met ander woorde, die persoon of ding wat die werk word doen. The person or thing that's responsible for the action of the verb. And then, of course, the voorwerp referring to the actual thing. Nee, is the persoon of ding aan wie die werk wordt gedoen word. Directly translated, translated, we could say, the voorwerp is the persoon of ding, the personal thing to which the verb is done to. And then the gezegde refers to the verb. Take a picture. Keep this in mind when we go through the, to the, to the um, rest of the lesson. I'm going to count till five, then you must have taken your picture. All right, so let's go on. Uh, the city says active and passive in your study guide, page 34 to 35. That's correct. So if you've got that English um, handbook, Afrikaans book, then you can go to page 34 and 35. Correct, Lissidi. Okay, guys, so let's go on. Let's start with the first thing, which is the Leiden de Forum. Uh, the other word for that is Afri in Afrikaans is the passive forum. And in English, you guys will know it as the passive voice. Oh, look here, the onderwerp in the voorwerp ruil om in die So I will have a sentence, a normal sentence, and when I write that sentence then in the leidende form or in the passive voice, the object and the subject will change places, will, will swap places in the sentence. Usually, and I didn't know this, um, but usually when they write newspaper articles, they, they sometimes use uh, onpersoonlijke, uh, use the leidende forum because it's a bit impersonal. They would, for instance, say everyone in the, in the explosion died instead of saying he or she died or a name of a person, especially when it's, um, when it's something big that happened and there was more than one casualty, for instance. Then they would use this, um, uh, and it's an impersonal way of referring to it. It's also there to um, protect the, the, the identities of people. So yeah, that's just, just an interesting fact. Then of course, beklem toning van die voorwerp. So when I want to emphasize or put a lot of attention on the, on the um, object, then I also use the blade in the forum. Why? Because it moves to the front. All right, then, as jy nie weet wie die handeling of action in die sin doen nie, dan gebruik ons gewoonlik die leidende of passieve vorm. In English, if you do not know who was actually responsible in the sentence for the action or the verb, then we also use the leidende vorm. Now, I have um, given a sentence here in the active form, bedrijf. The sentence will be, yo ma soek jou. If I change that sentence now in the, to the leidende, the passive voice, which we are discussing now, the subject and the object will change places, and we will say, Jy word dier jou ma gesoek. Okay, then of course, um, there is two uh, 
videos that I would also like you to go and watch. Please go to this and, and then also watch it. Guys, I think it's like three minute videos, just a bit of um, information for you. Okay, so quickly take a, oh, sorry. Look at all the chat boxes here. T take a picture, I'm gonna count till, till five in my head. Then I quickly wanna go to the next slide. Okay, guys, quickly, just tell me if you're okay. <laughs> the CD, you are very nice. You're very, very good. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Right. When we change the sentence from the active to the passive voice, of course, voorname or what we call pronouns. So what I'm doing is constantly, um, I'm putting words in here for you guys so that when you study it, it will be... Oh, look at that. It will be easy for you to, to remember. So we have got um, pronouns that change. So if I've got a sentence with the word ak in, it will go. Okay, we'll have a discussion about that later. Ek word my, jy word jou. I word home, say word haar, and ons hulle en jelle bly die selfde. Look at the example. In the bedrijvende form, ek lees die courant, that's the active form. In the um, passive form, it will become, die courant word dier my gelees. Remember, die courant moves to the front of the sentence, that's the object, and then ek word my. Jelle eet lekkers, die lekkers, remember, comes to the front of the sentence, the object, word dier jelle geëet. Take a picture. Okay, all right guys, then we can go on. Now this I got from a grade 10 book and I want you all just to relax here. Don't worry because I say a grade 10 book, it is the same with you guys. It's the same in grade eight as well. So the reason I took this is because it explains it very nicely to us. So remember we get three tenses, teenwoordig, which is referring to the past, Ach, not past, the present, the verlede tijd, which is referring to the past tense, and the toekomende tijd, which is referring to the future tense. Remember, in a leidende sentence, a passive sentence, the object moves to the front. And if you look here, according to Stompy now, uh, Stompy is being, um, um, is changing positions a bit. So now, instead of the, uh, um, the, the subject, the voorwerp will be in front of the sentence. Then the verb, time, manner, place, then the word dear, then the um, uh, subject, then um, to whom it's done, and then the last verb. Okay. Die kos, which is the voorwerp, word, if I change the sentence to the leidende um, form in the teenwoordige tijd, I'm going to use the words word and dear. Tijd, elke dag, wijze flux, plek, it happened in the kitchen, dear, onderwerp die ma, Vir die kinders gekook. Then the verlede tijd. Um, then I'm going to use the words is en duur. Die brief is verlede week nekies op die strand duur die meisie aan haar geliefde geskryf. You'll see that the, um, in front of all the verbs at the teenwoordige tijd, not all the verbs, the last verbs on the teenwoordige and verlede tijd, they've got a GE in front of the verb. The reason for that is with the teenwoordige tijd, we use the woord, we use the dear words, and then we use the GE in front of the verb. Verlede tijd, we use is, dear, and the G in front of the verb. Then in the toekomende tijd, start with the voorwerp again, start with the object, then the word sal, because it's going to happen. Volgende jaar, grete, grete means um, you're doing something um, uh, that you want to, you're very eager to do something. Plek in die bibliotheek, duur die meisie gelees word. So here you use the word sal, duur, word, and the ge. Please note, that we also work with help work where I think it's auxiliary verbs. 
verbs. Um, in the to come in the tight, if when we write a, a sentence and we use auxiliary verbs, we're going to follow the same pattern as to come in the tight with the word at the end of the sentence, uh, but we use sal. Um, the whole verb word is then sal with the rest of that uh, words changing there. Okay, so please take a picture of this. Please don't worry. We, I'm going to explain everything to you now as we go on. I'm going to count till five. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys, I hope you're all fine. Now I wanted to show you this just to give you an idea. When we look at Stompy, this is the way in which a laid in the a sentence, a passive sentence will look. There is Stompy. You'll see that the S, which stands for subject, and the O for object change position. So there's actually the word is now otsumpi instead of stompi. So you'll see it changed. When I've got a sentence written in the present tense, then the sentence will look like this. My werk, object, word, first verb, vandaag, the tight, then the word duur. So remember word and duur. Words I use in the present tense when I write the sentence in the later in the forum. Dear may, referring to the subject, finnig in die klas gedoen, the G in front of the main verb, and then the infinitive, om klaar te kry. In the past tense, we use the word us, dear, and then the G in front of the verb. Let's look. My werk, object. Then the verb is, vandag, the time, Dear, the second word with may, the subject, finnig, the manner, in the class, referring to the place, and then gedoen, the GE in front of the main verb, and then the infinitive, om klaar te kry. Now in the toekomende tijd, we use the word sal, duur, and then also the GE. My werk sal vandag, object, my werk sal, the first verb associated with the komende tijd, vandag, dear my, with the word dear, with the subject, vinnig in die klas gedoen word. Um, gedoen word, remember now, in front of the last verb, the, um, the, the um, sound ge, word, association with that, with the the forum, om klaar te kry. This I got from Mrs. Van Seil. Okay, so quickly can you uh, perhaps just have uh, take a picture of this and then I'll explain the rest to you as we go on. Okay, right, then I'm going on. Now, guys, um, there's just something that I quickly want to write in here for you, which is bothering me. Um, can I ask you all to go back to that first slide of Leyden? Just quickly want to type this for you. It's bothering me. rather do it like this, then I know. Okay, because we are 
because I want to take uh, the chance just to make sure that you're fine. Take a picture of this as well. So this is just what I wanted to do is show you here. Um, I want you to know that when I change a sentence from the bedrijvend and I make it late in the sentence, but the sentence is written in the teenwoordige tijd. The words I'm going to use is voor dier and then the g in front of the verb. If I uh, write a sentence in the leidende forum, but the sentence is in the past tense, I'm going to use is, dier, the ge and the verb. To comment, sal dier, sometimes word plus the ge and verb. Take a picture um, and yes, always I'll put it on the drive for you. Okay. Okay. Then let's go to the activity. Now the activity, I'm going to do it with you. So don't worry. I'm going to do one or two with you. Then the rest you're going to do on your own. So, die sien eet groentes op. I want you to change that sentence to the light in the forum. And this is how it's going to look. Remember, groentes op then is the object. In light in the forum, it moves to the front. Word dier die sien geëet. Die sien is then the subject and it's moved to the end of the sentence. You see there, I used the, word, the words woord and dear because it's written in the teenwoordige tijd. Now, die man het die kinders verjaag. Remember, we're going to start by swapping the, um, the object and the subject, which means we'll start with die kinders. You remember the word woord. Duur, and the G in front of the verb. See if you can quickly do that. I started the sentence for you with die kinders. And remember these words in the word and dear and the GE in front of the verb. Quickly, um, see if you can change that sentence now to the Leiden de Forum. I'm sure you guys can. I'm absolutely convinced. Okay, so, um, sorry guys, I made a mistake. It's actually is in word because it's um, because it's a past tense. Sorry, so if you see the word het, then you know it's past tense. So it's going to be, die kinders is verjaag dier die man. Okay, yes, um, Natalie, thank you. So let's quickly go there. Die mense het die fliek in eet te geniet. Past tense. So, die fliek... I started it for you. Us, dear, and then the verb. Look there. Because it's past tense, we use us and dear to change the sentence, and then the ge in front of the verb. So we'll start the sentence with die flick, then us, die flick, us, then dear, and finish the sentence for me. There, I've started the sentence for you. Die flick is dear. And then go on. Now, oh, come on, guys, this is very easy. Come on, guys, take a chance, don't worry. And Natalie, I see I'm actually typing this to you privately. Why am I doing that? Look now. Okay, so let's say, say the flick is dear in eten genie die mensen. Almost dead. Look at the sentence. The flick in eten is dear. Uh, oh, sorry, I made it wrong. Is dear die mensen geniet. Next one. Die jeffra sal die kinders huiswerk gee. Now look at this. This is a sentence in the toekomende tijd. Toekomende, which means I'm going to use sal. Um, dear, perhaps word, and then the GE in front of the verb. Okay, start the sentence with die kinders sal. Start the sentence with die kinders. Yeah, shh, shh, shh. Sorry, I'm talking to my dogs. <laughs> okay, start the sentence with die kinders.
Okay, the city you want to give it a go again, the kindish. Remember the uh, objects moving to the front of the sentence. It's a to come in the sentence. It's a it's a um, sentence written in the future tense. So we're going to use certain words. Uh, okay, good, Lucidi. You can ask what did the for house work here. Thank you, Lucidi. Natalie, almost the housework. Oh, look at me. Guys, huiswerk sal dier die onderwijser aan die kinders gegeven word. Sorry. <laughs> the said it's my mistake. I think it's old age. I'm telling you. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, hou a kaars ete. Start the sentence with start the sentence with a kaars ete. Remember present tense. Start the sentence with a kaars ete. I'm pretty sure now. Don't worry. If I'm not then I have to go and, and drink coffee and stay awake or something. Try and finish up that sentence for me. Okay, the city is saying a cash eater how hello. So the, the answer is a cash eater word hello. Remember, guys, you need to use the word word and dear when you write um yes, Natalie. Well done. Well done. Somebody looked at her notes as well. Good, thanks, Liz, uh, Lizetti and Natalie. Next one. Hulle het a klomp liekies gesing. Subject. Hulle. Object, a klomp liekies. So start the sentence with. Okay, remember. Hulle het a klomp liekies gesing. So is... Dear the G in front of the verb because it's written in the verlede tijd. So that's the word. A klomp liekies word dier hulle holle gesing, dier holle gesing. Okay, guys, um, remember you have to um, you remember the words in the past tense. Okay, so let's start again. Hulle het a klomp liekies. Natalie, almost there. The answer, don't worry, it's fine. A klomp liekies is dier hulle gesing. Remember past tense. There's two words that you're going to use with it. And it's is and dear. Right. Die man het met die groot oore eer die peer. Die peer. Start the sentence with die peer. Remember now, guys, this sentence is written in the present tense. So the words that you're going to have to put in there is word, dear, and then the G in front of the verb. Come, come, you can do this. Listen now. Concentrate. Die peer. Word, dear. Die man. And then finish the sentence. Da say Natalie, well done. Die peer word dier die man met die groot oore geëet. Correct, 100% correct. Die peer word dier die man met die groot oore geëet. Natalie, if I had sweeties, I would have given you a sweetie now. Okay, listen to me. Our plan for, tomorrow, for Monday, we finish this PowerPoint. Then we recap this because I think you need some extra stuff in here as well. Tuesday or Wednesday, we recap direct and indirect speech. So we will recap and recap until we understand this 100%. All right. Now, masks on, sanitize hands, take care, and have a wonderful weekend. Yes, we are finished. It's quarter two. Bye-bye, guys. See you Monday.